Okay, this is a video about the derivative rules. Now, this is part one of the derivative rules videos. There's going to be a couple other parts, so stay tuned. So, uh, this video is going to go over some of the basic rules that's going to make finding derivatives hopefully very, very simple for you. Okay, there's several rules, and they all have some kind of names, so we're going to go through them. The very first rule is very simple. It's called the constant rule. Now, as I go through each rule, I'm going to do my best to explain it with a couple examples as well. The idea here is that the derivative of a constant is zero. So the derivative of a constant is zero. So if a function is equal to a value, a constant, the derivative of that function is zero. And an example of this would be if a function is 5, the derivative of that function would be 0. This actually makes a lot of sense because what does the graph of f of x equals 5 look like? It's just going to be a straight line up here at 5. And the slope of such a line is 0. And it's always 0. Now remember, what is a derivative? It is the slope of a tangent line at any given point. Um, so that's why when you have a straight line like 5, the derivative is going to be 0. Or you could have a straight line down here like negative 5, right? Well, the derivative of negative 5 is also 0 because the slope is going to be 0. So that's our first rule of derivatives that's pretty simple, the constant rule. Okay, the second rule is called the power rule. Now, the power rule is a really pivotal one that's going to be used a lot, but it's a very simple one, right? So, if you have a function that's raised to a power, so x raised to a power, to find the derivative of this function is actually very, very simple. First off, that n falls down in front of the function, and then you go n minus 1 in your exponent. So, your exponent literally falls down in front, and then you do your exponent minus 1 to get your new exponent. So, that is the power rule. It's a very, very simple yet a very powerful rule. So it gets the name power for several reasons, right? Well, here's an example. If we have a function like x to the 7th, then the derivative of x to the 7th is going to be 7x to the 6th. Very, very simple. The 7 falls down in front. The 6 is already there. So it's very, very simple. Now, this leads us to the derivative of something like x as well. So remember, here's another example. And this example is easy to understand once I show it. What's the derivative of just x? Well, you got to remember, what's the exponent? The exponent is 1, right? So when we go to find the derivative, that 1 falls down in front. And then our new exponent is 1 minus 1, which is 0. Now, x to the 0 is 1, right? So 1 times 1 is always going to be 1. So the derivative of x is a nice, simple 1. Because once that 1 falls down, x to the 0 is always going to be 1, no matter what x is. x can be anything, and it's always going to be 1. So 1 times 1 is 1. So keep that in mind. Very, very nice, simple rule there as well. All right, the third rule we're going to work out is the constant multiplier rule. Now, this is if you're multiplying by a constant, right? So, basically, it's going to look like this. If you have a constant times x to the n, right? So, you have a constant out in front of that power rule. Well, we're going to go ahead and use the power rule, but that constant just stays there, right? So, that constant's still there. The n falls down in front, and then we have x to the n minus 1. So, basically, when this n falls down, when that exponent falls down in front, you just multiply it by that constant. That's why it's called the constant multiplier rule. So here's an example. If I have, for example, 3x to the 6th. Well, this is the derivative is going to be uh, 3 times 6x to the 5th. 6 falls down. 6 minus 1 is 5, which means my derivative is 18x to the 5th. Pretty simple rule. Let's do another one. If my derivative is uh, 2x squared, well, I'm sorry, if my function is 2x squared, my derivative would be 2 times 2x to the first. 2 comes down. 2 minus 1 is my new exponent of 1, which would be 4x. So my derivative would be 4x. So very, very, very simple constant multiplier rule. Doesn't really take a whole lot to figure that one out. Okay, uh, let's slide over here. Sorry, I went, went down too far there. Let's slide over here. The fourth rule is going to be called the sum rule. Now, this one's pretty easy. Uh, remember, the word sum means to add. So, if I have a function, right, let's envision a function that is a combination of two functions. So, it's g of x plus h of x, right? So, two functions together. To find the derivative, you just simply take the derivative of g plus the derivative of h. I mean, <laughs> 
doesn't get much easier than that. So you've got a function plus a function. To find the derivative, you just find the derivative of each and add them together. I mean, it's so simple. So here's an example, right? Um, actually, let me erase this. So let's say that the function we have, f of x, is 9x to the 4th plus 3x to the 2nd. Well, this is like two functions, right? 9x to the 4th plus 3x squared. So the derivative would just be finding the derivative of each one. So the 4 falls down in front of that 9. That's going to make 36x to the 3rd. Plus the 2 falls down in front of that 3, and that's going to make 6x. I mean doesn't really get much harder than that. I mean, how simple is that? 4 times falls down in front of the 9. 4 times 9 is 36. x to the third. 2 falls down in front of the 3. Very, very simple. Let's do one more here just so you can see it. If I have a function, let's see here, um, 3x squared plus 5x ma plus 7. Okay, so it's almost like I have three functions. I got 3x squared, I got 5x, I got 7. So let me find the derivative. Well, the derivative of this first part is going to be 6x because 2 falls down, 3 times 2 is 6, 2 minus 1 is 1, so 6x, that's it. Plus, okay, if, uh, remember, envision a 1 right here, 1 falls down in front, so that's 5 times 1 is 5. That's going to be x to the 0. Now remember, x to the 0 is just 1, so I write nothing there, and the derivative of 7 is 0. So there's my final answer, 6x plus 5. I'll go through that one more time. 2 falls down in front, 3 times 2 is 6, so 6x. And then here, the 1 falls down, 5 times 1 is 5, but that would leave x to the 0. Now, some kids actually like to write that x to the 0 right there, but remember, x to the 0 is just 1, so you don't really have to write it there because we know that 5 times 1 is 5. So it works out pretty simple. So very, very nice, easy rule there. And now this next one is going to be just as easy. This is the um, difference rule. And the difference rule is pretty self-explanatory. It's for the difference subtraction, right? So once again, if we have a function f of x, and that function is made up of g of x minus h of x, right? Two functions being subtracted to find, um, whoop, use the wrong symbol there, to find the derivative of f of x. All you have to do is find the derivative of g and subtract the derivative of h. So it's literally exactly what we just went through. You just got to have a minus sign. So here's an example. So we have f of x equals, um, let's see here, 5x to the fourth minus 2x to the third uh, minus 7x. Okay, so to find the derivative, right? Well, 5 times, 5, bleh, bleh, sorry for my... Uh, Talking too fast there. 4 falls down in front of the 5, so that becomes 20x to the 3rd. 4 minus 1 is 3. 3 falls down in front of the 2, so that's negative 6x squared. Where's the negative come from? Because it was a minus 2. 3 times minus 2 is minus 6, or negative 6. Minus 7. Now, no more x's on the end there. Here's why. Because remember, there's a 1 right there. 1 falls down in front. Negative 1 times 7 is negative 7 x to the 0, but x to the 0 is just 1, so you, you don't write anything. You're done. Very, very simple. Okay? Very, very easy. Now, I want to show you how we can continue to use these rules in some weird situations, right? All you got to do is rewrite. So think of this function, right? 1 over x to the 3rd. Okay? Now, you might think, well, that's going to be a tough one. How do I find the derivative of this? Well, it's actually really easy. If I rewrite that, it's x to the negative 3. All I'm doing is turning it into a negative exponent, because we all know that exponents on the bottom can be written as a negative exponent, right? So these two equations are essentially the same. So now that I wrote that as a exponent, a, I could use the power rule. So the derivative is going to be negative 3 falls down in front. Now, you just got to be careful here, because remember, once that negative 3 falls down in front, you subtract 1. So negative 3 minus 1 gives me an, an exponent of negative 4 now. And then the one thing I will tell you is don't ever leave a final answer with negative exponents. So this would give me negative 3 over x to the fourth. The uh, negative 3 stays on top because it's just a constant. x to the negative 4 would move to the bottom as a x to the positive 4. So how easy was that? So now even problems that, that don't quite look like we could use our rules, if we rewrite it with a negative exponent, we certainly can use our rules. All right, let's do one more example here. I'm going to change colors just so you see it. Let's do another example here where we have... Um, 3 over x to the 5th, 
Okay, well, once again, I could write this as 3x to the negative 5. All I'm doing is rewriting it with the negative exponent. It just makes applying my rules so much easier. So now I get negative 15x to the negative 6. Please keep in mind, negative 5 minus 1 is negative 6. The negative 3, I'm sorry, the negative 5 times 3 made the negative 15. And of course, I'm going to rewrite this as negative 15 over x to the positive 6. Very, very, very simple using those rules. Hopefully, that is easy. I think it's pretty easy, so hopefully you will as well. All right, um, let's slide over here. Let's do a couple more problems. Now, let's do some trig rules. So this would be rule number, boy, I think I, I left, let me see where I left off with my rule numbers. I'm kind of uh, got off track there. I forgot. So we had rule number five is difference rule. So I guess this would be rule number six. Now, uh, there's no, I'm just calling this rule number six. You know, it doesn't, just in the scheme of the world, this is not set as rule number six, just what I'm calling rule number six. But anyway, I'm going to call this my trig rules. Okay, now with trigonometry, now these are kind of rules you just kind of have to memorize. And the first one is if your function is sine of x, then you just kind of have to memorize the derivative of sine of x is nice, simple, cosine of x. How cool is that? The derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. Very, very, very easy. Now, this next one is a little bit tricky, so just give me a moment to explain. If your function is cosine of x, Okay, the derivative is, guess what, everybody's probably going to guess sine of x, you're almost right, it's negative sine of x. So these are two rules, you honestly, sorry, you just kind of have to memorize. The derivative of sine is cosine, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so keep those rules in mind, not too bad there. All right, so let's kind of combine these with some, let's do some examples with these trig functions, right? So if I have a function that is something like 3 cosine of x, and I said, hey, find the derivative of 3 cosine of x. Well, once again, 3 is just a constant. So since it's a constant multiplier rule, we're just multiplying by 3, I'm just going to think about that 3 just sticking around. And i got to think about what's the derivative of cosine. Well, the, derivative of, the, the, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so I get negative 3 sine of x. There's my derivative, negative 3 sine of x. How are easy as that, right? Simple. I don't think it could be any easier. Um, so then all I did was rearrange the negative out in front, but it's still going to be negative 3 there, right? Let's do one more example here. Let's make this one slightly trickier. Let's see here. Uh, 5x squared minus 2 sine of x. Okay, now I've got to apply a whole bunch of rules on once here. First off, this is subtraction, so I'm going to use my difference rule. i just got to find the d derivative of both of these and then put them together. I mean, it's so easy. Now I'm going to use my power rule. 2 falls down in front. 2 times 5 is 10. x to the first. You can put that little 1 there if you want to. Now back here, the negative 2 is nothing more than a constant, so I'm just going to kind of leave that constant there. The derivative of sine is cosine, and that is it. I'm done, right? I mean, how easy is that? Uh, the negative 2, again, is just a multiplier. It's just a constant multiplier, so it just stays there. The derivative of sine is cosine, so that's how I got my final answer there. I mean, these rules are really nice and simple to work with. They're not overly complicated. I'm not trying to trick you with them. They do make going throughout these derivative problems pretty simple. So that was uh, video part one. Stay tuned for part two.